Okay, Koku from blackfilm.com, go ahead and ask your question. Yes, thank you. Um, so Russ and Georgia had a question for you. Um, in the moment when you were filming West Side Story, did you guys just know something about it was special or did you feel like um, you were happening about something that just felt different? Well, I, I, because it's become such an incredible part of history, you know? Yeah, I have to say for me, uh, thinking back, it did feel special and so far as I think we all, it wasn't spoken, but I think we all felt we were working on something of quality. It, it always felt so good. And I think that was the main thing. Uh, again, it, it, it wasn't words, we didn't talk about it, but it was a feeling. And I, I remember feeling that very strongly myself and thinking about it but over time, uh, again, how we all really felt uh, you know, uh, the word was out about West Side Story around town in general. And so we had different stars from other productions coming to visit us. I think because the word was out about these young kids working on this movie with all this energy. Uh, and again, I think the word was out and we were, uh, people were drawn to come in, uh, to the set and watch us work. But it was again, it was because of how it all felt. We all felt really wonderful about, I think about what we were working on, who we were working with. Amen. I, I, I agree. It was, um, it was huge. I mean, I, I was in the army when I went to, uh, on, on leave and I went to New York and, and so, that's where I, when I first saw the show and, uh, and bought the, uh, the stage album and took it back to the base in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma, where I was serving two years. And I even memorized all of uh, all of Tony's uh, songs because uh, that's the part that I, I wanted to do. And that's the part that I, 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 I really, uh, and, and not only did I want to do it, but, but uh, MGM said that they would let me go and test for it. So, or let me go and, and uh, not test for that part, uh, but I guess in a way I did because I tested with, they had me test with several different actresses, Anna Maria Alberghetti, uh, Barbara Luna. Uh, there were several uh, actresses that, that tested for the part of Maria. And I thought pretty well, I thought I was gonna get the part and it wasn't until my agent who was also Robert Weiss's agent called me and said, uh, sorry, but the, they've given the part to uh, Richard Beamer. And I was so disappointed. And they said, but they've offered you the part of Riff. And I think that was really a smart choice on their hands because uh, first of all, it was a, I thought it was a better part in a way. Uh, once I started to do it and got into it, I realized that Riff was, uh, was a much more, a character that fitted my personality a lot a lot better who was Mercutio, you know, in Romeo and Juliet. And uh, so I was so happy in the long run that I did that. I think the part of Tony has been, every show that I've seen, it's always been a, a trouble, a problem for, uh, uh, for whoever ever played the part. Well, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, Tony in the theater and the film is, is the most difficult part. But yeah. by the way, in, in terms of the atmosphere on the set and people coming to watch us film, I remember one of the people uh, who came to watch us one afternoon was Angie Dickinson. And she was working on Real Bravo, I think it was. She came in a costume showing those beautiful legs. <laughs> She had the most gorgeous legs. She was a beautiful, beautiful woman. But uh, so I remember her visiting because of those legs. 